What's happening guys? So let's talk about this upcoming welterweight title fight that's coming up in about a week. Um, I believe it's this weekend in fact, between Terence Crawford and Amir Khan, man. Um, I did a video about this before, you know, before the fight was officially announced. And um, I made my feelings clear on it. But this is, I guess you can say, just a quick prediction. What I think is going to happen in the fight and a few more points I'd like to add. You know guys, Amir Khan, and I've talked about this in the past with Amir Khan, and, and I've talked about this with other fighters too, there are fighters in boxing who, in my personal opinion, the boxing fraternity have conned the fans and conned the public into thinking that these guys are so beyond their beyond their actual realistic ability. And, and I've said this in the past, I told you guys how I felt about Tony Bellew, um, Erislandi Lara, Huey Fury... You know, I made videos on those guys, on how I felt that those guys were just complete frauds. And to be honest, guys, with this upcoming Terence Crawford Amir Khan fight, and with a lot of people surprisingly giving Amir Khan a chance, I mean, I, I saw on Twitter a lot of people saying that they think it's going to be a close fight, and that they're giving Amir Khan a decent chance of winning. Um, I, I, I would put Amir Khan in that same category, guys. Amir Khan is so overhyped. And so overrated that I don't even know how to put it into words. It is insane. Now, matching up against Terence Crawford, you look at how Khan matches up. I want to ask you guys, what, what clear advantages and what clear attributes does Khan have that gives him a, an advantage against Terence Crawford? Please tell me one thing. I mean, the only thing that, that comes to mind is hand speed. Maybe Khan's a little bit quicker. But is that really going to matter in this fight? Is it? I mean, I don't think so, because Terence Crawford, I'll tell you one thing, Terence Crawford is a heck of a lot faster and a heck of a lot quicker than most of the guys that have beaten Amir Khan. Let's be real, I mean, and not only the guys that have beaten Amir Khan, but guys, look, throughout Amir Khan's entire career, I'm talking from when he was a prospect all the way through to now, and he's coming towards the end of his career now, he's, he's admitted it himself, he's only got a couple of fights left. All the way through his career, all the way through it, even going back to his amateur days, he still makes the same mistakes that he made as an amateur. Okay, he still gets caught with lead left hooks. Um, you know, he still overcommits. He still doesn't know how to pace himself for 12 rounds so that he doesn't run out of energy. You know, he still has problems. He has no idea, no idea whatsoever how to defend himself on the inside. And those shortcomings that Amir Khan has and those problems that he has and those you know, those flaws that he has, those holes that he has in his game, have never been improved throughout his whole career. If you look at Khan's early fights, even when he was fighting journeymen, even when he was fighting area-level guys, he was getting dropped. He was going life and death with these guys. Look at his fight against Willie Lemond, guys. L Willie Lemond, who had about four KOs or something, put Amir Khan on the canvas. Amir Khan got up, realized he was so badly hurt that he went back to his knees and almost quit. Like, that's, that's what happened to him against that guy, an area-level fighter in Willie Lemond from Scotland. Man. And, you know, he, he went in against that French guy. I can't remember the dude's name, but he got dropped by a left hook. It was some journeyman from France. Um, you know, he, he went absolutely life and death in a shootout against a washed-up Michael Gomez. You know, Michael Gomez put him on the ground. Uh, Michael Gomez was prematurely stopped in a, in a fairly competitive fight where both guys were down. Do you see what I mean, guys? I mean, I can't. In, at that part of his career when he's a prospect, I always knew, I mean, we all always knew that Amir Khan was limited, okay, the signs were all there, and then when, of course, he did reach world level, well, he got completely found out, didn't he, I mean, even before then, he was brutally knocked out in one round by Bradis Prescott, you know, Terence Crawford also fought Bradis Prescott, and, <laughs> let's just, and, and Terence Crawford was pretty much a prospect himself when he fought Bradis Prescott. And look at Crawford's fight against Bradis Prescott and what he was able to do against Bradis Prescott. And compare that to what Amir Khan, what happened to him against Bradis Prescott. I'm pretty sure I don't, I'm pretty sure I don't need to remind you guys how that ended for Khan, do I? And it's interesting that to this day, Amir Khan still hasn't given Bradis Prescott a rematch. You know, he was ducking the rematch for years and for all the people, and, and there are many of them, all the people in the boxing fraternity and all the fanboys online who say that that fight was a fluke and that the only reason that Prescott beat Khan is because he caught him with a lucky punch and all that stuff. All I will say to that is, when Khan did reach his prime and became world champion, have a look at Khan's fight against Paul McCloskey and how that fight went. 
And then look at Bradis Prescott's fight with Paul McCloskey, which was McCloskey's very next fight. Who do you think looked better? And that was both Khan and Prescott when they were both at their prime. Khan was not a prospect at this point. He was defending his world title. That was both of those guys at their prime. Who do you think looked better? Who did a better job to you, Prescott or Khan? Amir Khan, who couldn't even lay a glove on McCloskey and won by a technical decision on a headbutt, you know, <laughs> because the ringside doctor, which is against the rules, jumped into the ring without even being called in and raved, waved the fight off. I didn't even know that was legal in boxing, but that was what happened. You compare that to Prescott against McCloskey. Prescott dropped McCloskey. Prescott broke McCloskey's nose. He cut him, you know, legitimately with punches. He outboxed him for the first half of the fight. He faded in the later rounds, and he ended up losing by a, a close, somewhat controversial decision. It was in McCloskey's hometown. But, yeah, a lot of people thought that Prescott won, and certainly in the first half of the fight, he did a much better job than... Prescott actually showed... Better boxing skills than Khan in that instance. So, to all the people that say in the fight was a fluke, all I'm going to say is, well, the rematch never happened, so we don't know that, do we? I mean, it's like saying that the Canelo fight or the Danny Garcia fight was a fluke. You know, Amir Khan has never shown any interest, really, in a rematch with those guys, so we don't know. I mean, when Amir Khan fought... Um, What's his name? When, when he fought Lamont Peterson, the guy that Sergey Lipinich just knocked out. I mean, Lamont Peterson, everybody bitched and whined and moaned about how that fight was a robbery. Look, that fight wasn't a robbery. You guys need to watch that fight again. Watch it in HD. Amir Khan in that fight, and, and that was definitely a fight to me which exposed so many of Khan's flaws, man. Because we'd seen that he'd been knocked down, we'd seen he was quite vulnerable, quite chinny, and had a tendency to rush in and get caught and dropped but in that fight against Lamont Peterson we saw that how easy Khan is to back up you know Lamont Peterson got dropped early on he was trying to box on the outside but then he went to plan b and he started you know he started pushing Khan back started working the body started throwing hooks and uppercuts and Amir Khan's only response was to push and hold hit on the break to, to, to push away with the forearm and as a result of that he got points deducted and rightfully so so all the people that were complaining about that decision I think you really need to watch that fight again and watch it objectively you know I thought Lamont Peterson clearly won that fight if I'm being honest and uh, yeah Amir Khan to me he's shown those same flaws all the way through his career you look at his fight against Julio Diaz another fight where he got dropped and taken the distance uh, had a life and death fight against Chris Algieri, you know, where he got buzzed with several lead left hooks again. Chris Algieri is not a big puncher. Um, you know, he had a tough fight with Carlos Molina. And that's another thing about Khan, man. Like, like one of the things that Khan doesn't do, that he needs to do, in my personal opinion, if he, if he wants to improve, but he hasn't done it his whole career, and it's too late now, he needs to take responsibility for what happens in fights. I've noticed that when he loses a fight, or when he has a bad performance, it's always somebody else's fault. Like when he lost to um, Danny Garcia and Lamont Peterson, you know, he blamed the judges, uh, he blamed Freddie Roach, you know, and, and, and all his fanboys blamed Freddie Roach, and they said he needed to switch trainers. He then went with Virgil Hunter, and we know what a disaster that turned out to be because he didn't make any improvements under Virgil Hunter at all. And I know some people are going to say, well, oh, well, he beat Devin Alexander under Virgil Hunter and looked good. Like, guys... Seriously, when was Devin Alexander? Somebody's going to need to explain to me, please. When was Devin Alexander? Since when was he a world-class fighter? Somebody going to tell tell that to me? Because from what I remember of, of watching Devin Alexander's career, he got schooled by Andreas Katelnik and he got a gift decision. He got absolutely bitch-slapped, absolutely dominated by Timothy Bradley, and he quit like a bitch after getting beaten up for 10 rounds. Um, <laughs> you know, he... He got dropped and, and they taken the distance by Matisse and, and most people thought that Matisse won that fight. Devin Alexander is not a world-class fighter, guys. He never was. I don't know why people completely blew that win out of proportion. And, you know, stylistically, he was the type of guy, he was a southpaw and he was a, a you know, a back foot guy. He was the type of guy that suited Khan. You know, he was the type of guy that Khan liked to face, so... I think that people blew that completely out of proportion. I don't think that beating Devin Alexander and guys like that proved that Virgil Hunter had a, pos a positive influence over Khan. He didn't, okay? When Khan fought Andreas Katelnik, it was just as good a performance, if not better. So, yeah, and that was under Freddie Roach, I believe. So, Amir Khan, man, 
he's not a world class fighter. He's never been a world class fighter. He's a domestic level fighter. I'd say he's a British level fighter who managed to win a world title due to being carefully matched. I mean, Andreas Kotelnik, being the champion he took the title from, isn't exactly an elite fighter, is he? And when he took when he took on Zab Judah for the IBF title, let's be real, Zab Judah again, not an elite fighter, never been an elite fighter. You know, more of a um, an American level fighter who won world titles again based on you know based on careful management and stuff. You know, Zab Judah was the type of fighter who lost to every world class fighter he ever faced in his career. So. Yeah, I, I, Andy was past his prime. Let's not forget about that. Judah was way past his prime at that point. So Khan is overrated, massively overrated. And Terence Crawford, on the other hand, he's on a roll right now. Okay, he's been knocking out everybody he's been fighting since since um, Victor Postal. That wasn't a very impressive performance from Crawford, in my opinion. But since that fight, he's been dominant. Okay, he he destroyed, he knocked out uh, Julius Ndongo in three rounds to to become undisputed. He knocked out. Um, he knocked out Jeff Horn, of course, who who was officially undefeated. I know that Manny Pacquiao should have won that fight, but still, Jeff Horn was a very tough, durable, strong, big puncher with a good chin. Um, I mean, would you pick Amir Khan to beat Jeff Horn now? In in 2019, if Amir Khan were to fight Jeff Horn, w- would you be confident in Khan's ability to win that fight? Because I tell you one thing, I wouldn't. I would probably favour Jeff Horn in that fight. Jeff Horn is the bigger puncher, Jeff Horn is more durable, Jeff Horn is the, the young and fresher guy in terms of, um, you know, in terms of the wars he's been through, he hasn't been knocked out multiple times like Khan has, um, you know, hasn't been on the canvas like 14 times in his career, I mean, <laughs> I think it's 14 times that Khan has been on the canvas anyway, I actually counted it a while back, but yeah, I mean, he was even down in his last fight against that Vargas dude, man, I mean, Amir Khan... Guys, Terence Crawford has been knocking out guys who are much tougher and much durable and much more proven at world level than Amir Khan is, guys. I mean, come on. Um, Crawford is ambidextrous, likes to switch his stance, likes to set up those hooks from distance. He's very good at, you know, at landing a counter left hand from a southpaw stance. You know, he um, he has experience of going 12 rounds in, 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 you know, competitive technical fights. You know, he beat Ricky Burns over 12 rounds. Is Amir Khan that much better than Ricky Burns, really? Is he? I mean, Ricky Burns has certainly achieved a lot more in his career than Khan has. I mean, that there are a lot of fighters in the UK right now in and around about that weight division that I would give a decent shot to beat Amir Khan. Um, I mean, you, you've got Kelbrook there. I mean, I mean what, what exactly is it about Amir Khan? that makes his fans think that he's so much better than all these guys. He hasn't proven it, okay? He's not a world champion, hasn't been a world champion for years, okay? And when he won his world titles, it was against, you know, it, it was both, it was mostly against, mostly against paper champions, wasn't it? I mean, Katelnik and Judah were basically just paper champions at the time that Khan got the titles from them. So, you know, you compare that with Crawford, who has proven that he can win a world title on the road, you know, he's proven that he can, you know, defend his world titles and, and, and put on a show. You know, he's, he's had some very good knockouts. He showed a good chin against Yuriokis Gamboa, who was very fast and quite powerful, despite his, his lack of size. Um, you know, Crawford, to me, has just proven his level. He's proven that he's world class. He's proven that he can box, you know, against, against Postal. He fought a bit of a negative fight and, and ran quite a bit and did a lot of dirty shit, too. But... You know, he proved that he can win in that type of fight, you know, in, in that type of chess match, um, you know, between two technical boxers. And I don't really think Khan has proven that to me. You know, Khan only looks good when he's fighting somebody who's tailor-made for him, like somebody who's a southpaw and hangs on the outside, like somebody like Kalazo and Devon Alexander or Zab Judah and or, you know, somebody who's just going to go down as soon as he hits them, like Phil LaGreco. As soon as Khan fights somebody with a little bit of ambition who tries to back him up, you know, who tries to come forward and tries to work the body and do things like that. Khan has no clue what he's doing. It's like, could you imagine what a prime Ricky Hatton or a prime Barrera or somebody like that would have done to Khan? I know he beat Barrera, but again, he was washed up. And uh, imagine what a prime, like, inside fighter would have done to Amir Khan, somebody who would rip his body and push him back to the ropes. I mean, he's just so limited. You know, he's so hittable. And, I mean, with all the times he's been on the canvas... All the times he's been knocked out. I don't know why 
anybody would, would be confident in his ability to beat Terence Crawford. So yeah, this video has gone on way too long. I think Terence Crawford is going to demolish Amir Khan. I think Amir Khan has 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 gotten this title shot and and and. I don't really think he should have gotten the title shot, if I'm being honest. He hasn't done anything to get a title shot at Crawford, but yeah, certainly hasn't done nothing at welterweight anyway, I tell you that. So yeah, the, the only reason that Khan has got this fight is because, you know, Bob Arum and Top Rank know that he's easy pickings. They know that it's an easy fight for Crawford that will get a name on his resume because people know Amir Khan because of his history, but... Yeah, they they wouldn't have taken this fight, Crawford and Bob Arum and that, if, if they thought that Khan was a threat. Okay, he's not. You know, Terence Crawford is a guy who they're very confident in. They're very confident he's going to win the fight. You know, he has the home advantage. Um, it's for his title. He's undefeated. He's on a roll. He's got loads of momentum. This is a mismatch, guys. Terence Crawford is going to smash Amir Khan to pieces. Um, yeah, and, and I can all, I can already hear in my mind, I can hear Khan's post-fight interview. I was in that fight until I got caught. I lost my concentration. Crawford is a great fighter. Uh, and then it's, okay, so you do, do you want to fight Kell Brook? Uh, oh, Kell Brook's a great fighter, but uh, he doesn't want to fight. Uh, uh, I beat him in sparring 2005. Uh, uh, he's a great fighter, but uh, I just lost my concentration. Um, uh, there's other fights out there for me. I've got bigger fish to fry. Uh, Kell Brook needs to, needs to get a world title. Uh, Kell Brook is not undefeated. Kell Brook, you, you know, you know that's going to be his, his post-fight interview. He's going to be, you know, all his fans, and he's going to say, oh, he was winning the fight, or he was landing a few grazing shots here and there, and we were all so hyped, we were all on the edges of our seats, then, bam, Khan went to sleep, and he gets put on memes. <laughs> you know, that's how it is. It sounds harsh, but, you know, that you know that's the whole situation summed up for you, isn't it? I can just hear it in the back of my mind, man, with his post-fight interview, and talking about how he was in the fight till he lost concentration, yeah, it's, it's just, it's like a deja vu in it with Amir Khan, it's the same, t same thing over and over in a big fight, it's the same thing, so yeah, let me know what you guys think, Crawford is going to bust that boy up, let me know what you guys think, thanks for watching, God bless.